Well, this is this is your backup. This is your cue sheet. That's what this is. So what I want to do is point out a couple of things. First off, the Corps, with your tax money, has invested over $800 million. And that, on the upper left side of that chart, under keep the dam, you see that big red arrow going down? Well, if you don't have color, it's the big arrow going down. $800 million, your tax money, spent on retrofitting those dams to increase, improve, bypass for juvenile fish down going down river guess what you got for your money zero. zero salmon wild salmon survival rates are worse than they were when we started okay anybody say what well, got hatchery fish guess what survival rates for hatchery fish are worse why does and so, well, wait a minute, we've been hearing all this stuff from NOAA Fisheries, we got record runs, like last year. They're not as good this year, but last year, oh yeah. Well, if you compare them to the 1990s when we almost lost the whole damn run, true. But if you go back to 1960, before the dams, heck no. We had a heck of a lot more salmon. That was what, you know, Collins chart showed that. And what did we have but pre-dams? A lot more salmon. We have about two or three percent left. The other thing is about all this is people say, well, let's work on it another five years. You know, a judge just came out with a decision. He said, oh, you got your fed screwed up again. You need to consider breaching. <laughs> oh, and then what did he do? He gave him five years. They asked for five years to do more studies. We've been studying this for 25 years. This one cost 33 million. And it tells us we need to breach them. So what on earth are we going to do spend another $200 million on studies and plans when in fact we already have an environmental impact statement that has breaching in it and it's sitting there right now that the trip, the president of the United States can pull the trigger. Point is, we cannot rely on a federal judge or the court system or litigation to do anything fast enough. We are out of time. The biologists, that I depend on, the government biologists, some of these are in the Corps of Engineers, are telling us we're within one or two years. If we don't start breaching, we're within one or two years of losing wild stocks, hatcheries are shortly behind them, and those guys will be the next to suffer. Okay? So, that's what that your investment got you. Nothing. Hydropower. Guess what? Pacific Northwest has 18% surplus hydropower. And, and so just circle that number over on the right when you see when you see hydropower on the right hand side under remove you'll see surplus sources just keep that in mind we have surplus power so you can remove these dams and nothing will happen in the power grid okay so um what else is kind of fun on here um people think these are flood control projects oh my god you hear that no they're not they do not provide flood protection. In fact, one of the dams, the uppermost dam, actually causes flooding or can cause serious flooding in Lewiston, Idaho. Um, jobs. Oh, we're going to collapse the economy of eastern Washington. Wrong. If you breach, you're going to get at least three to 4,000 jobs just in recreation. Never mind the orchards and vineyards that can be put back in the lower Snake Valley. And you know what all that looks like, the trappings that go along with vineyards and wineries and restaurants and the river. Woo. Man, we're talking something here. Um, I'm not gonna go through all this because I just wanna give you a feel, but bottom line, keep the dams. Look at the top left under where it says keep the dams. You see that 15 cents on the dollar? That is the benefit cost ratio. That means for every dollar of your tax money or rate money that you put into these dams, you get 15 cents back. Now, I, I don't need to tell you that's not a good deal. <laughs> so I want you to, let's just, let's just get this. Say after me, 15 cents on the dollar. 15 cents on the dollar. A little louder, 15 cents on the dollar. So now when you talk about work as examining and say uh, economics, you say 15 cents on the dollar. And then you can say, oh, I don't believe that. And you show them this. And you can talk about a couple of those things. If you remove the dams, we're talking anywhere from four to $20 benefit for dollar investment. That's pretty damn good. 
In fact, I just got off the phone with the top budget guy in the Corps of Engineers this morning, reminding him of this, and I said, what is your current standard for benefit cost ratio on a core project, 2.5 to one? That means $2.50 for every dollar invested. We're at 15 cents on these four dams. I just said, you know, I, I can be 200% wrong. And the, this still is horrible investment. Okay, so, um, one other, I, you know, there's a couple other things that are going on here. The little chart shows you the comparison between um, keeping these dams, and you can see that red line has all kind of cost, and breaching the dams is actually pretty cheap. By the way, these dams are real easy to breach. They have earthen berms, you just wash them away with the river. Really simple. This is far simpler than even Condit or the Elwha dams. And so, and I guess um, one other point is at the very bottom, it says it costs more to kill Snake River salmon than to save them. This is true. We are spending tons of money and all we're doing is killing salmon. So anyway, that is your economic lesson, cost and economics. So um, I, I, I hope that you, you're armed now I'm not an economist, so I'm like you. I'm like, what is this stuff mean? Well, anyway, this this is your cue card, your scorecard, whatever you want to call it. So go out there and do stuff. Now, what, where are we to just kind of wrap this up? What do we need to be doing right now? We've been briefing people in Washington, D.C. We've been trying to brief congressional staffers. That's not easy. Um, and we, we, we're having a tough time at it. We have presented the case. They cannot argue with this stuff. It's their numbers we're using. So what does it take? It takes public pressure at this point. That's you guys. So how do you do that? I know a bunch of you have been calling the White House. We call, some people call every day. You need to do that. 202-456-1111. Some of you've got that on your phones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the White House. <laughs> Of engineers Can I take it right now? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Mindy? Oh, shoot. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi, Mindy. How are you doing? Well, I'm standing in front of about 100 people at a conference and just talking about the Corps of Engineers. <laughs> So, uh, uh, there you go, you hear that? They're saying hi, Mindy. 15 cents on the dollar. 15 cents on the dollar. We just gave them an economic lesson in the Snake River dams, and they understand now that 15 cents on the dollar is all you get for your dams. Anyway, I better get back to this, but uh, I, I, I did one. I'll call you back in a few minutes. So, uh, I'm ending. <laughs> Well, you got to get Senator Murray to kind of, you know, you know, not get mad if the president preaches them. Or how about Governor Inslee? We don't want to make him mad. Well, oh, we're running for re-election. Well, you know what, folks? We don't have time for those kind of excuses. We really need to put the pressure on. So the letters you write, the calls you make, heck, it's it's time to start doing protests and sitting down. You know, some of us were out there when Obama came to town a few weeks ago, protested. It's time for that kind of stuff. Other things you can do, you know, we have a Facebook page called Damn Sense. It's on that card that we just went around. I would ask you to like us on Facebook. I, my, my social media people, I, I'm not a Facebook person. They say, you gotta do that, Jim. Get them to like Damn Sense because we post a lot of information there. It's, you know, what's going on currently. So do that, um, call, uh, we need help. Uh, I'm looking for a, an, a, an associate, an assistant to work over in Port Angeles with me. If anybody's interested in coming to work for with me for a year let's let's come you know get with me and let's talk about salary um and then finally um if you can't take the time to get involved read reports or do stuff or get active you can always go to our we got a little gofundme thing it's uh, i think on the back of that card 
um, you know, drop 10 or 20 bucks on this or something, because that's gonna help pay for that associate. And the only thing, you know, we've got about six volunteers, uh, professionals like myself and others that are doing this. Uh, the only people that get any money, we hire some of the economists and they, for about a third of their cost, we, we do take them. All the, the working community's paying for this so far, that you guys are the help. And we also um, are trying to pay for, uh, you know, an associate, a coordinator of all this information. So that, that's the only thing that we're looking for money for um, is to just basically, you know, pay for the economist and get some uh, coordinator help in here. So that's, that's what I've got to tell you. If you've got any questions, I can you know, do that quick. Well, Dan sense is two words on Facebook, not one word. The one word is a software company. Yeah. yeah. Two words on Dan on you, Facebook. It, it, we found that it takes a couple tries to get it, and then once it sinks in on your phone or something, it'll, 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 it'll pop up. Um, Jim, I'm just wondering for, for, we talked a lot yesterday about um, us getting the message right that the orca scientists are giving us, and I want to make sure that we get the message correct on this. Is it correct for us to set, like I get so aggravated when I hear people talking about dams being green or being sustainable or being renewable, because although they don't, um, you know, perhaps they're better than coal or whatever, they kill entire ecosystems. So is it, like how, what kind of language can we use when people are saying that dams are renewable and clean and green? I mean, I know that this is, is there a term you guys use or can we invent one for you that's, Sort of describe what dams do. Well, you know, you often will see green, you know, in brackets, and that, that's because of what you're saying. People recognize that they really aren't green, all of that term gets used. And they're not green for all the biological reasons, in addition, in some cases, of uh, the methane issue. And methane is so serious in the southern hemisphere that they actually have realized that the dams are putting out more carbon than the coal plants that they replaced. Um, it's not quite that bad in the northern hemisphere yet, but it's going to get worse. So, um, the, the, you know, you have to look at a dam as a tool, it's a means to an end. And any time, any one of these dams is different. I mean, they're all different. And so it, you, it's difficult to generalize about a dam. And so uh, the best thing to do is like what we're saying is on the Snake River, these dams are especially egregious to salmon migration and the temperature issues are the worst. That 70 degrees already, and here it is, it's 21st of July. <laughs> it don't, normally, does that doesn't happen until the end of August. Oh, somebody mentioned cooling with the generators. Um, on the Snake River, that's been tried, and they're doing everything they possibly can, and it doesn't help. The only thing that does help is there's a dam up in Idaho called Dorjak, 700 feet. That 700 foot dam does have cold water at the bottom. That water is used to cool down one reservoir in the Snake River to pop them. However, they did that this year early to keep the Idaho sockeye from going, from going, you know, getting killed like they did last year. Problem is, they shot their wad or that cold water and now they don't have it for the fall Chinook. Why did they do that? They didn't want to get in the press this summer. Why? Because if they can make it till August or September without any bad press, then they're probably thinking Obama doesn't have time to breach these dams. We've still got about two months of pressure to put on these guys to get him to breach these dams starting, the first one starting in December. But only you guys can do that at this point. I mean, we were calling and doing our stuff, but it, you know, one or two people, you know, it is, it punching in these facts is not gonna do it. It's gonna take public pressure, but you guys gotta deliver that. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a question. So I know, like historically, the salmon runs are way down. So what can we expect if the four lower dams are breached? How long? Like, how much more salmon are we going to have, and then how long will it take to get that? that? The uh, the biologists were very very conservative about that. You know, say, well, it'll take twenty or thirty years before. Um, if Elwha is an indication, though, they're wrong, it'll come back pretty quick. I mean, it, within the first year of breaching of the upper dam, they had a thousand uh, beds or reds in there already. So, uh, you know, and that's the thing, is that the Snake River itself is habitat for Chinook. 
And that's been ignored by scientists uh, pretty much consistently in the government. So you immediately get that back. But let's face it, it's three years before you get adults back. And the problem is, like I said, we're running out of time. Every year you wait, you're adding 10 or 20 years to your recovery cycle. It's, it's getting that desperate. So that's why time is of the essence. Um, Look at that, one, two, three. Three dorsals. And go in here. There's another one right here coming in the lighthouse. Oh, Jesus. Keep missing the, missing the... We keep missing the bridge. Oh, here we go. Dorsal and back logging on the top. That you're talking about. There was a movie that... Goody, what do you think? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just like the craziest thing ever. <laughs> been the best trip ever. Have, I'm so you know, sad Amy's not here. That's what she was just texting me. She's like, I'm never doing this again. She's like, I'm never missing out on again. There it is, there it is. Oh, look at her!